Good morning guys. I am finally in my new house. For those that are new, let me catch you up real quick. I moved here from Canada and now I'm in Olympia, Washington and I moved here with my husband who is American. I'm Canadian. We own a soap business together and on this channel I've documented that entire journey and we are now at this point in our new house, which has been a long time coming. For this video, I've been trying to think of a good, coherent timeline, a, pretty much a theme, which I like to do for all of my videos, but it has been so chaotic trying to move things in here. There's been a million different tasks, which is why there's very little footage of us actually moving stuff into our house. Hey, Chicky. It has been so chaotic trying to deal with all of the little things, trying to set up my kitchen here, trying to set up our bed over there, trying to move all of our stuff into the studio. Yes, there is a studio in this house. So I thought this video would be a good one to basically give you guys an update on where we are at at this moment. And to also show you around this house because I know so many of you have been following our journey and are so excited to see the house Kale and I eventually bought because it did show us looking at a few different houses. I actually did not physically view this house before we bought it. I left that task up to Kale and he chose well. I am so happy that we're here. This is pretty much my dream house. You can kind of see glimpses of it there's some nice blue walls in the hallway, a little bit of the kitchen there. There's a lake out there. And this whole morning has pretty much been magical. It has been so magical sitting here and taking it all in. I'm honestly just so happy, so joyous, so peaceful. And I'm so happy to be finally sharing this with you guys. I basically love it here. And even though the house is a big mess and there's boxes everywhere and stuff is not in, the place it's supposed to be or will be. I still want to give you guys an idea of where we are at. Um, I'll start with the kitchen because that is the most put together room right now. Well, actually this room's pretty put together. When we moved in, my sister-in-law Anne came and pretty much wanted to unbox all of our kitchen stuff. So thank you so much to Anne if you're watching. You were such a huge help in getting the kitchen organized. So I'll start there and then we'll move to different rooms and I will show you the status of each one. And for those wondering, yes, Jiggy is very excited to be home. She and both the dogs have been loving living here. Dempsey is napping in our bedroom and Gibson, I'm not sure. Gibson, there he is, <laughs> come here. I knew you were somewhere close by. <laughs> he has been loving living here too. Have a sit. Paul. <laughs> Down. And I think the best part about being here is having our family all together again. It's been a while, huh? Since you've been hanging out with Jiggy and me and Dempsey and Dad all in the same spot. Oh. Here we are in my kitchen. And I definitely wasn't lying about how messy it was, but we are getting there. At least we have the table set up and we have all of our dishes and kitchen stuff mostly put away. In our old house, we had an island, but in this house, we don't. We just have the table in the middle, which works for us. Actually, the original owners of this house, they did have an island, which is over here. I'll show you this piece closer in just a minute, but they wanted to have a bigger table in their kitchen, so they moved that island to the corner of the room, and I think there's still plenty of counter space. And if you watched the last video, you'll remember that Kayla and I had to buy a refrigerator. This is the spot that it's gonna go in right here. And you can see that we have a little mini fridge there for now, which when we do get our full-size refrigerator, that guy's gonna go down into the studio and I'm gonna use it for my business. This is a neat thing that the owners of the house didn't have here before, but Kayla and I decided to put this table, which was behind our couch in our old house in our entertainment room. We decided to put it up here as kind of a bar area. And we realized when we put it in here that it was the perfect height to be right at the spot. And 
it's perfect here. We love it. We can have our morning coffee here, look out at the beautiful view and take it in. We could also have our meals here as well. When Kayla and I lived in our old house, we ate a lot of our meals at the kitchen island instead of at a formal dinner table. So this works so well for us. We love it here. One of the things that sold us about this house were all the little unique touches that we found all over the place. And this is one of them. This was their kitchen island that they moved to the corner of the room. And this is them. They painted it. They added these details onto the cabinet drawers. And I absolutely love it. You'll find that throughout this whole house that they've had, they've added touches that you wouldn't find in normally brand new houses, which this house is very, very new. And I'm so glad that they did because Kayla and I love quirky houses that have um, unique characteristics here and there. And this house has tons of it. This is a neat touch. This is a housewarming gift given to us by a realtor who helped us find this place. He is fantastic. He was amazing to work with. And he also went to college with Kale a long time ago, which is why we worked with him, but he ended up being so awesome. And yeah, thank you, Mitch. You really did find us the perfect house. If you look past the mess for now, please focus on these mug holders. I love these so much. This place definitely has less storage than our old place, but I do like the unique storage solutions that they have. And this is one of them. I'm a huge fan of just having our mugs hang here for easy access, first of all. And second of all, I think visually it looks really cute. When Anne and I were unloading our kitchen stuff, we were looking at the cabinets and thinking there's no way that we're gonna be able to fit everything in here, but we actually ended up with a ton of space. It's super deceiving. We have um, cabinets that are empty and drawers that are empty. So that is awesome. Over 16 years ago, I was working part-time at Ikea. And for those who have visited Ikea, you guys all know Ikea is famous for its hot dogs that they sell out of their bistro. Well, that was my job. I was the hot dog server eventually hot dog cashier at the Ikea Bistro in Vaughan, Ontario, which is really near Toronto. And it was at that job that I met my best friend, Diane, who I mentioned in my last video, she was my bridesmaid for my wedding. And I remember the first shift I had with her, we were washing dishes after a long night of selling and serving hot dogs. And she turns to me and asks me if I wanted to come over to her house and play a board game. And the board game at the time was one I had never heard of and you guys might know this one, it's called Settlers of Catan. And I agreed, we are strangers at this point. I decided to go to her house and play this board game. And when I was there, I met her entire family and I adopted that family as my own. Her twin brother is now one of my closest friends. Yeah, we still love and talk to each other to this day. I can't wait until she visits here. But that was also around the time where she invited me to her family cottage. And that was the first time I experienced a dwelling on a lake. And I fell in love with it. I fell in love with lake culture. I fell in love with being on the water and dreamt of someday having a home like that. Not a cottage that you visited part-time, but a year-round home that I can live in all the time. And as the years went by and I left Ikea and I got a full-time nine to five corporate job, and kept leveling up in the corporate world, I always had that goal in mind to have a home they lived on on a lake. And it wasn't until I decided to start my own business that I eventually was able to accrue and save enough money to get closer and closer to that dream. And that has, this goal has been 15 plus years in the making. I feel like I've manifested my dream life it is honestly surreal. It's so peaceful here, guys. And I'm just so proud of Kale and I. I am so proud of the journey that we've taken to get here. And we are so grateful for not only the choices that we made, but the hard work that we put into it and all of the people that have supported us to get to this point. Thank you so much, because we could not have also done it without you guys. We are in my uh, primary 
bathroom or the, the bathroom suite that's attached to my bedroom. And I wanted to start the shot off with me sitting on the floor so I can show you these amazing floors. <laughs> and this is one of the things that I was talking about when I spoke about the character of this house and how it has these unique touches that you wouldn't find necessarily in most homes. And these floors aren't the only thing I love about this room. I also love this wall here. They put down some white planks and they painted the wall dark above it and I just love the contrast. And they have a lighter gray wall on the other side. It gives this place such a cottagey, homey feel. And yes, I still have unpacking to do, lots of it actually. Over here is our closet. We have lots of garbage bags full of our clothes that I still need to put away in here. And there's Dempsey. Hi Dempsey. We are now headed down to the studio. I'm really excited to show you guys. Unfortunately, these shelves did not make it in the move. They're all bent and broken. So we're gonna have to get rid of them and find another storage solution for my finished soaps and bath bombs. And this is it. <laughs> when Kayla looked around this house, of course we loved the lake. Of course we loved all the cute little touches that the previous owners of this house added to this house to give it its charm. But what really sold the house was this room down here, which is my future soaping studio. This space is actually bigger than my soap studio that I had in Calgary. It's much more open. The ceilings are much higher. We're gonna get a ton more light in here than I did in the other studio. And I have a gorgeous view of the lake. So while I'm working, editing videos, making soap, packaging all of my orders, I'm gonna be doing that in the most beautiful room with the most beautiful view. And I could not be happier. It's honestly such a magical moment just, just being in this room right now and being able to talk to you guys about it. This is literally, literally my dream come true. Right now, this room is a huge mess. When we were putting stuff down here, our focus was get our stuff out of the moving truck down here and just put it somewhere, anywhere. <laughs> there are tons of boxes here. I don't know where anything is. I'm gonna be delayed a little bit in terms of sending my golden bubble patrons their handmade gifts. Obviously, I need to dive into these boxes to find my ingredients but I'm also gonna be delayed in posting in my Patreon in general because we don't have internet in this house just yet. We're gonna get that in a couple of days. I feel like I'm gonna be slipping behind for this week, but at the same time, I'm okay with that and I know that the people who support me and wanna see me succeed will understand. There are so many things to get done right now and you can easily get overwhelmed by the huge, huge list, but what I'm just gonna do is tackle it one day at a time and hope for the best. I mean, I really don't have a lot to complain about right now. I don't. <laughs> and I know it will all come together. Oh my God, there's an eagle that I just saw swoop over there. I know it will all come together. And in Calgary, it seemed impossible too. When I first moved into that house, I was in the same exact situation, surrounded by boxes, feeling lost, feeling pretty overwhelmed and not knowing how it was all going to come together and yet it did. So I, I just have faith in the process. I'm trusting the process. I'm just enjoying the fact that I'm here because it took so long to get here guys. <laughs> but now that we are in the studio, I wanted to show you kind of how I envision it all coming together. It might change. I don't think I have the 100% plan right now, but I, I have a general idea. In this corner of the room, you can see that they put this beautiful brown wooden wall. I think this is where I'm going to set up a nice shelf where I can put, I don't know, maybe some plants, maybe a nice background for when I do talking head type of videos where I'm just talking to the camera. And over here in front of the window, I think I'm gonna put a couch and I have the couch that I want to put there over here. It's not put together yet, but <laughs> um, something that was important for me in this space was to create somewhere where I can just relax in without having to go upstairs and be able to take a break once in a while. So that couch is going to go in that corner 
where this window is. I think my desk is gonna go there next to this brown wall. And the reason why I'm not putting the desk there at the brown wall is because they left behind uh, an electric fireplace thing that goes on the bottom there. So I don't wanna cover that up with my desk. So I'm gonna move my desk over beside it. And in this corner in general is where I plan to put my big packaging station that I had at my other studio. It's in a million pieces right now. I told Kale not to worry too much about getting that up and running right away because I can't register my business here in Washington until I have my green card and that I don't know how long that's going to take. And while we're figuring out visa stuff, I'm just gonna be taking my time, doing my research. Like I mentioned in other videos, just building my skills as an entrepreneur and building that solid foundation for when I finally do relaunch my business down the road, whenever that is. In this corner where there is a tower of boxes, I do plan on putting my main making table and I do wanna put it in front of the window there so I can get some natural light so that I can film me making things. I think for this wall it'll be raw materials that I use a lot. I'm gonna store them in shelves up here. One thing that the space is missing unfortunately is a sink and I desperately need a sink to clean my molds and all of the things that I use, all of my tools that I use to make my products. So I have no idea when that's coming but it's coming. And back there we have some storage behind that door. The storage area back there isn't finished and we need to also install some lights in there so that we can turn on a light whenever we go in and out. Again, that'll come in time. Not a huge, huge priority right now. Well, that is the gist of it. I don't know if you can tell in my voice how excited and pleased I am with this space. And I'm even more excited to share with you how it all comes together once we start to unbox things and put things in the right place and assembling furniture and installing sinks and it, it's all gonna come with time and I think I'm in a much better mental headspace now than I was over a year and a half ago when I was doing this in Calgary. I think I feel much more confident about who I am as a business owner. I feel much more confident about my business in general and I'm also really happy to be here in a, not in a business sense, but in a personal life sense, to be here with my husband and our fur babies and to be finally living the life that we've always envisioned while still being able to do the soaping stuff <laughs> in this space. And I think this house is perfect for that. So I'm really, really thankful how it all came together. I'm trying to find my soap making supplies and tools and equipment and <laughs> there's a lot of boxes to go through let's just put it that way um, I want to make a dupe of this really popular soap I already got kale to grab me some of the oils that I'll need so that's ready upstairs I just need to find literally everything that I use to make soap and it's a lot of different tools <laughs> the thing is some of these boxes have random things put in there. You know how you're packing and you'll find a random thing that you forgot to pack away with the rest of its buddies? So you put it into another box because it has a little bit of space. We did a lot of that. I really don't know where anything is. Like here for instance, in this box we have pillows and my bath bomb press. Here it is. Okay, at least I know where that is. I found clay. <laughs> Charcoal, perfect. Yes! I found my blender. I definitely need that to make soap. <gasps> and we have soap molds. So the reason why I want to make soap is because I want to make a handmade gift for my golden bubble patrons. And quite a few of you guys have signed up. So I'm going to size up from the 10 bar mold that I usually use to the 20 bar mold. This is Winston and Walter's soap mold that I absolutely love. We're going to be using this today. And I'm so glad I found it. Found the lie. Tea tree, awesome. And bergamot, bergamot. I have everything I need to make soap right here. And with that, I got to soaping. First, I measured all my hard oils and set them in a water bath to melt down. While they were melting, I combined my soft oils. Herbivore's first ingredient in their ingredient list is sunflower oil. Kale could not find pure sunflower oil at the grocery store, just this kind mixed with olive oil, so I went with that. 
He also couldn't find safflower oil, so he picked up grapeseed oil instead. Now, castor oil is not an ingredient in herbivores charcoal soap, but I decided to add it anyways to bring down the really high cleansing value the soap had when I entered it into soap kelp. So in here are my hard oils that I've been melting slowly in a double boiler. There's only two in this recipe, coconut oil and palm kernel oil. Now that they have melted, I'm gonna combine this with my other soft oils. So in this bucket, I have my soft oils. For this recipe, the main oil is sunflower oil, which I thought was interesting because I've never used sunflower oil before in soap, let alone it being the main oil. But I heard that sunflower oil, especially high oleic sunflower oil, is very similar to olive oil. And with olive oil prices just skyrocketing right now, it doesn't hurt to look at some options, although sunflower oil is priced kind of the same as olive oil right now. I don't know if there's any cheaper alternative. Let me know in the comments. If you guys have found something like that out there, let me know, please, because olive oil is just ridiculous right now. Also in here is grapeseed oil. And I know in the list of ingredients, they list safflower oil, but I could not find safflower oil in, I think it was Fred Meyer, Kale was looking. Kale Meyer, Kale Meyer. Kale looked in Fred Meyer, he looked at Safeway, he looked at Walmart, we could not find safflower oil. So I looked up some comparables and grapeseed oil is very similar apparently. So that's what I'm using instead. And to improve on this recipe, I added some castor oil. It doesn't list castor oil in the ingredients, but when I punched in the ingredients as it was in soap calc, the cleansing value was really high and I wanted to add castor oil to bring that cleansing value down, but to also add some big fluffy bubbles to this bar. So I'm just gonna combine the two together so that I can bring the temperature of these oils down. Right now they are way too high to soak with. And then we're gonna wait until the lye is ready. Its temperature is also way too high. I like to soak below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. My oils and lye are now ready. We're at 94, can you see that? We're at 94 degrees Fahrenheit for the lye and for the oils, we're at 83. So we are good to combine them. Whenever I'm working with a brand new soap recipe, I'm always nervous though. So here goes the lye in with the oils. I normally work with citric acid in my lye water, but they didn't have it on in their recipe, so I didn't include it. That and it would have been another ingredient to have to go fish out of the basement. <laughs> so now we're just going to blend everything together until just emulsified. It's gonna be a very light trace. So here's my soap. I'm gonna add the activated charcoal, which I dispersed in some grapeseed oil, just to make it neat. I'm gonna give it a stir. Seems pretty fluid so far. I haven't added the essential oil yet. It seems to be behaving. That can take a turn really quickly. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is actually put in half of the soap batter into here. Just kind of work in half batches. And this really helps give a gauge to see how fast an essential oil will affect the soap batter, if at all. So I have a little bit of green tea botanical extract in my essential oil blend. I didn't have any rosemary extract, which is what was in the herbivore recipe. I'm just gonna pour in half. We're gonna give it a stir. I think we're good to give it a few, I don't know, is it okay? I don't know, <laughs> I'm so nervous. We might be okay to give it a few blasts with a stick blender, so I'm gonna do that. So it looks like we have a very slow mover on our hands here. Awesome. Man, I missed making soap so much. That satisfying pour, oh my gosh. A lot of soapers say that soaping is therapy. I definitely agree. That is, of course, if the soap is behaving, <laughs> which the soap is. Now we're gonna add the second half to the rest of the soap batter. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick blend this all together. The essential oil blend is tea tree, lavender, and bergamot. 
my detox bar that I made for my company is a similar blend. I use tea tree, I use lavender, I use peppermint in mine. And yeah, I, I never thought of adding bergamot, but the scent is really nice. It's really soothing. It definitely smells like a spa type of bar. Oh, this is a dreamy texture. Do I go from here, the top down? I think I do. It's so hard to remember what I used to do. It's been a while. This is actually a very dreamy soap texture. I love when soap is this texture. It's wonderful. My first soap in the new house. Woo. And I really like how it turned out so far, at least the making part of it. I'm gonna let it sit away from my pets and let it solidify over 12 hours or so, and then I'll cut it in the morning and you guys can see what it looks like on the inside. Oh, it smells so good. Love it. It is the next day and the soap has set up. When I look at the surface of the soap, it's definitely lighter than when it was wet and that's to be expected. But what I didn't expect are these little speckles that you see on the surface of the soap. And those speckles are the green tree extract that didn't fully disperse in the essential oils when I put it in there. So for me, I still think it's a beautiful look, but I'm curious to see what that looks like once I cut into the soap and see the inside of it. What I do notice about this soap is that it's soft. Like if I were to press it with my finger, it's pretty soft. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, it just cuts like butter. I miss that so much. I love making soap. Here, you can see the two layers of my two different pores. Even though you can see the speckles around the edges, you don't really see it on the inside of the soap. So that'll be interesting to see how it cures. I'm so pleased with how the soap turned out and the smell is amazing. This is different from my detox bar. It doesn't have any shea butter in it. It doesn't have any hemp seed oil in it. This is as close to herbivore's recipe as I could get without knowing their exact percentages. But judging from the way it soaked and came together and the consistency of this bar right after cutting, I think it might be similar to my conditioning recipe that I have available on my Patreon. And the recipe for this, the exact one that I used to make this bar, that is also on my Patreon, which is linked down below. And I would say that that soap recipe, if you follow it exactly, is really beginner friendly. The batter moved really slowly. It gave me a ton of time to mix my activated charcoal into an oil and just figure things out. And in a space that I'm new in, I've only lived here for a couple of days and a recipe that I'm unfamiliar with a recipe like this is perfect. So yeah, if you are trying to find a recipe that you can just jump into with cold processed soap that's a little bit above the basic recipe, you should try this one because I really like it. And because it's an activated charcoal soap with tea tree oil, do expect it to be cleansing. So if you make this soap and you find it a bit drying, that's what it's supposed to do. So um, if your skin is dry already or if it's sensitive to soaps, then maybe this isn't the soap for you, but if you want something that can help exfoliate your skin a little bit, maybe you have oily skin, activated charcoal soaps are awesome for that. That's why a lot of companies that sell soaps commercially, the big box guys, have their own version of this activated charcoal soap. 
I'm so excited for my Golden Bubble patrons to get a bar. I'm really sorry to you guys that it's late, but it's coming together. This week was a bad week for me because I had to wait to get internet. I'm a little behind in terms of Patreon stuff, but for those watching um, this video on Friday, know that by the time you're watching this, I probably have everything up to date and ready to go. But my handmade gifts, they're gonna be definitely late. I have this one and I think I'm gonna be making bath salts for my Golden Bubble. Uh, patrons, so um, that's gonna be next week. I can't stop smelling. This is so nice mm. So I'm going to put these soaps away where they can cure for a little bit Ideally, they should be curing for at least four weeks But because I'm already behind in sending my gifts out, I'll probably ship them before they're fully fully cured I'll send a little note to my golden bubble my golden bubble patrons to not use them until a specific date for the most optimal so, and that's a tip too, if you are gonna be selling soaps before their optimal cure time, make sure your customers know to wait until a specific date before they can use it so that they are getting the best soap that they can possibly get. It's perfectly safe to use, but if you use soap before the four week cure is done, you might find that it dissolves much faster than, than it would if you had waited the full four weeks. You guys will know how much I've missed holding a tray full of soap. It's a weird thing, but Man, I love, I love, love, love making soap. Isn't this beautiful? This is a gift from the original owners of this house. They gifted it to Kale and I as a housewarming present and I absolutely love it. This is such a thoughtful and sweet gift and you can tell that the owners of this home loved this house and took care of it and really wanted to make it unique because they loved living here and I'm just so glad that they chose Kale and I to be the next owners and we really hope that we keep in touch because they are awesome, awesome people. 